I believe that this school is a battleground, the site of a feminist infiltration. Oh my god. What is this guy? What the <laughs> fuck? Hello, and I'm back. I'm Ash Mannix, and I'm playing Katawa Shoujo Act 1. Um, I think where we left off was in our dorm, having moved, had a heart attack when a girl confessed to us, ended up going to hospital, turns out I had, our main character has a serious heart condition, and then gets transferred to a new school, special school with people with kind of health conditions, and he's met some uh, potential waifus, so... Oh no, a little bit different from your standard uh, harem style visual novel, but still got some waifus in there, so we'll see how these uh, things go. I just need to load up the last save file. Ah, here we go. And I've totally forgotten all the voices I was doing, even though I only did it a few days ago. But hey, such is life. Um, I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light grey ceiling. I'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I. This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed, it's me who's supposed to be the one living here. My bag's on the floor, and my new school book's on the desk. My numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottle for a moment, deliberating, until I open a bottle, shake out a pill and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slick out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter, and she's in a sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids ha hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe they are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the questions remain on, remains on my mind, so I decide to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Hmm. Hmm. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. Hmm. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ishi-chan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Hmm. That's a good question, Hee-chan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. Mm. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you're actually transferred in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, Hee-chan. The truth is it's a local event and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Hmm. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud, I can see heads turn to look in our direction. Not so loud. Hmm. 
Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. Hmm. Now, it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quietly, qu quickly quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. Hmm. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Hee-chan. What? That's right, Hee-chan. Are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that very every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? He chan is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or is Misha just looking at me, looking after the girl who left? No, nothing. Hmm. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I'd go to the library and pick some... Oh, that's me. I thought I'd go to the library and pick, some, pick up some books. Not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yay! <laughs> okay, he chant perfect. The rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into it, where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Hmm. Yes, it is, He Chan. Impossible. Really? Really? I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really. Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are comp competitions over a prize. If there's no prize in the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Ho 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 ho! Looks like our man's kinda got a little favourite here, eh? Early on. Are you sure, He Chan? Very sure. <laughs> You're wrong, He Chan, because. I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence and my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. What? <laughs> Disney pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I had almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria. <laughs> That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess. In my old school, I liked to eat outside near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. 
I wonder if there's a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Yuzuni and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favour eating in the classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had boxed lunches. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we, are, we left off earlier. Oh, hey Chan, you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Right, Shi Chan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again. Misha straightens her posture as if she is about to deliver a speech. Hey Chan, do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm, there is a book club, right, Shi-chan? Right. But it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Shi-chan. It's a really popular club. Ah, okay. But more to the point, Shi-chan, does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Good, great, that's great, he chan. Really great. <laughs> Why is it so great? No reason. Well, he chan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council? I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it. And Misha is laughing. Yuzuni quickly retakes control of the discussion, in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. <laughs> hmm? Right, right, He chan Maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day, He chan Shi chan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shi Chan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that she's now Misha may not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this. As if reading my mind, she's now quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. <laughs> of course, we're not trying to get you to join us just because we'd obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to. So, you're admitting that? <laughs> no, we admit nothing. I mean, he chan of course it would be nice if you joined, and we'd appreciate it. But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one's school. Yup, it's true, he chan Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, he chan Can't tell if she's being genuine, or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. Oh! Already pretty cute, look at that! Well. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, He chan What? No, no. No. Aw. See, He she chan of course it wouldn't go so easily. Yup, that's right, though it would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, she chan owes me candy now. You're betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Disney seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting, he chan Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, he chan if you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, oh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive, and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So, I'll have to decline. He chan I'm very offended. Are you saying that you don't trust us and that we pull something so disingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry. 
It's hard to tell where Shuzhenu's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No. How about a game of paper football instead of rich man poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he chan And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, she chan Wahaha, that means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. Not like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, he chan He's only frowns at Misha, telling me that she's prob she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. You know, this is kind of similar to the games that they played in uh, the Higarashi. The girls would play the games with the main character in that, and they were always better than them at it. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on one before or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like she's named Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Ooh, you kind of like them. Nice. Okay, Hee-chan, how about Risk? The game of world domination. I don't know what that is. It's really fun, Hee-chan. You fight for control of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like she's name would be good at it. If you want to play, we can, we can after school. Ah, really, Shi-chan? We can play just for fun, He-chan. Shi-chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, 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 perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room, then, He-chan. Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's more for sure than anything. So in the end I agree, only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. Oh, oh the girl with the straight hair disappears again. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. I mean, you want to be nosy, because you want to ask about it, but you don't want to be nosy. Make up your mind, man. After school, oh well, that was that was fast. She's named Misha, quickly find me by the floor first floor lobby and latch on to me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I mean, I can think of worse situations at school. Personally, I was probably the total opposite. I was walking around with uh, nobody, no friends. So it's nice that there's people that are like taking an interest in you, especially when you've just moved into the school mid-year or whatever. Man should be more appreciative the people around him. I feel a little offended, but I've been considering it and then nevertheless I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. Wahaha! <laughs> What's wrong, He chan That's right, we're just going to play a game of risk, remember? I don't know, Misha. This all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's a high, that's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me... Oh, what? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hee-chan. 
Shi-chan says that when their life is threatened, people have, the sh have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened? Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune, who makes a baffling face put and puts her hand behind her back, looking pleased with herself. Hmm, 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 hmm. Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizune opens the door to the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it is quite large, maybe even a little larger than the classroom. There's a big table in the centre, surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the tables and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else, in fact, nothing else. This is... a pretty bleak room. They could at least put a potted plant in here or something, but the most noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people. Are we early? No. What do you mean, no? Does it mean nobody else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Hey Chan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. Ha ha ha, okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking, running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drubbing her fingers on the table to get my attention. Hee-chan, Shi-chan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Hee-chan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. She trying to admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> You're so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples, as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her heated signing. Ah, wait, please slow down. Shichan, uh, Hichan? Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Ah, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. She says you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. Oh, let's see, let's see. Now I'm assuming that these choices have an effect. Maybe I should save at this point, actually. Save, create new save state, continue. Turn. What to choose, what to choose. It's a trap, it's smart to play defensively. She's saying, I don't know. It's a trap. They know something. It's likely that she's just trying to psych me out. Looking at the board again, I have a pretty good defense set up and I'm not going to wreck it doing something reckless. 
A few turns later, I lose the game anyway. Ah. Uh... Shizunia adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself to tentative, tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. Yeah. Wahaha, <laughs> Hee-chan, you lost when you allowed me to take North America. I mean, Shi-chan, not me. Getting control of North America is ambitious because it provides a five army bonus, but you can attack it from three fronts, so you must defend them all. I thought you'd have more guts. How disappointing. Ambition, he chan your player your play needs to be more daring. Ambition, ambition. I was really excited when you took South Africa South America, but then you switched to playing defensively just because you gained a small advantage. That's no good, he chan You didn't take enough risks. And then you, when you did, you didn't follow through. That's terrible, he chan why am I getting berated for this, man? It's just a game. Chill. Damn, what's the tour if I played too carefully? There's no need to rub it in my face. Exactly, man. Why is she rubbing this in my face? Oh. She's she's in his getting close now. I wonder if you'd be any good for the student council. Oh, damn. I wonder if I wonder if you'd even be any good for the student council. Oh, burn! Are they gonna use this to try and get him to join? What's this? Reverse psychology? Our man knows. He knows. I guess I don't have to worry about joining or not in that case. Giving up just like that? I expected more of you. Seriously, is she's not trying to taunt me into joining the council? Besides, I don't even want to join. It's only my second day. I can't make that kind of commitment. Ever. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. And these two, they're a little weird. Are they though? They're just like... I don't think they're weird. I think they're just... Um, I, I don't know. More active? Peppy? What's he wanting? What's this man wanting? Fine, I'll consider joining the council. But I want to take a look at the clubs before I decide. Really, he chan You're not just saying that to make us feel better. Yeah, yeah, I'm not just sure that I want to. I'm just not sure that I want to. Aw. Okay, he chan But we're not going to give up so easily. You said maybe. There's still a chance you'll come around. Come on. We could really have fun. We could play more risk and maybe one day you could be me. Unless we graduate before that. That doesn't make me feel any less reluctant about joining, you know. Wahaha, <laughs> surely you're not that horrible at board games. Maybe we can play a game you know then, to give you a handicap. I may have said that just to make you feel better after all. Oh, that's cold, He-chan. I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realise I've spent far longer playing Rest than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Isn't he scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine when the library is open? There's a clock right on there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian's absent. I think you're right, Shichan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. Do you want us to show you where it is? No thanks. It's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye! One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. Classrooms are marked with signs stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them, or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the latter and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. It would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. 
At the very least, it means that someone is inside, and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the centre of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it's much easier to open than I'd anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head ever further inside to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is quickly snatched away. Ooh, who is this? And a new person, a new character has entered. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking centre stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, leaving me standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes but doesn't look at me. Wait, she's drinking tea? Where's the teacup? I see no teacup. Also. This person is awesome. You a tree drinker? You're ace in my eyes. Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she's a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. distinct. Uh, hi, sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Here to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Um, thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling. That and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind, like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese? As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Ah uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech partner doesn't match the formality of hers, accentuated by a restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realising the futility of the action. I'm Lily Sato, pleased to meet you. Isao. Isao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of her teacup. Would you care for a drink? Sure. As much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a nod, taking the request in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. Seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her back, she seems to use her long, dainty fingers to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the student in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Susanoo and Misha have no problems working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offerer preparing the drink. So, her soft voice brings me out of my silent ob observance. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do a measured, prim and proper soft voice. Not with my voice, anyway. But I will try. Which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library, Shusunia and me, I mean some classmates told me it was on this floor. 
He finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi, as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, no? That's right, in the science room with Muto. She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Oh, oh, I'm disappointed in you. Nice old man. Toffee? Coffee sucks. Well, actually, I don't mind coffee, but I'm a tea man. Tea first, coffee second. Nonetheless, the smell's quite nice. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. I have choked down, what the hell? Thanks, Sato. It's really, it tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself as it really does seem as if she's catering to me. So which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes. Correct. I'm in class 3-2, which is on the third floor, same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi, and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Ah, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. My, my. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Ah, sure. Sorry. I guess I'm really showing my newness here. An environment like this would be a big change, so I can't fault you for it. While the same can't be said for everyone, many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic, I segue into another. Do you come here to drink tea often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as class representative don't leave enough time for an official club, so a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. What kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm. The more popular ones are the track and field club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the baseball club, and the book club in a room near the library. There are also numerous small ones too, though, such as the art and music clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet, rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if the school shares the same rules as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? It isn't, though it is encouraged. Ah, good. That's a relief. I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Ah, the time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. It just looked like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of the time. Sorry, Hisao. I don't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly move to allay her concern. Ah, no, it's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? He pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. True, it's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Hmm, I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hand still neatly folded on the table in front of her. 
It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help, I should be able to find it alright. Well, unless my navigation skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. Yeah, I mean, maybe you should just let her show you where it is, I don't know. It's alright, I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great, thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the hand of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boys, the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room, apparently situated in the centre of the floor rather than either wing. Ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is a wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with the distinct smell of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There doesn't seem to be a lot of students here. Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's probably either in the school grounds or the dorms. Yuko, are you here? She says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present, and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Ah! The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Oh, another character. Hi Lily, how can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? I heard a strange sound. It's nothing, I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped and when I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I couldn't know. It's okay, it's okay, sorry for making you worry. This is nothing, I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Yes, worse things have happened. <laughs> the girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles, shuffles some papers around the counter for no reason. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles and a very troubled look, she seems to be f to fit a library, library perfectly. Ah, Lily, did you get my message? Message? Hmm. Oh, the two imported books that arrived? Right, right. They came. They finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. Oh, no, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or return one? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. He's with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Hisao, right? Hisao. Pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name on her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in Braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisao a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. I, please Lee, I can't. I don't know what he could be interested in. This is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But, so there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to not exactly relax, but at least look slightly less tense. 
Well, I think about a third or fourth of Yamiko's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that be here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Uh, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the funding of Yamiko is so good. That's probably why. They spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organise and shelf all of them. Wait, 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 wait. You know, I've not looked closely at this librarian. I just kind of assumed for some reason that this was one of the students. <coughs> oh dear. <coughs> that water went down the wrong way. <clears throat> but, um... Oh, she's like a fully, a uh, full-time employed librarian. <coughs> It's so troublesome and they waste so much. I wish I could quit this job. Uh, nice to... This is a nice first meeting too. <laughs> so I wish I could quit my job. I mean, I know that feeling. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Yes, too much information for the first meeting. Um, I'll go check the aisles then if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us if she doesn't keep talking to me. <laughs> I mean, true, but harsh. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have these books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I studied the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout, but it is what it is, a library. It's like the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lillian stuck in snuck with us in here, unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks set up for sturdy or personal reading. Going a little further though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd students sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. As I glance around, I see someone who I recognise sitting on one of several beanbags. Ah, yes. The infamous dark-haired girl. The one who's been hiding from everyone everyone seems to be ignoring hmm it's a dark haired girl from my class the one who snuck out of the classroom earlier she's reading a book keeping it close to her face which makes her look like she's really into it from the way she was acting today i had her pegged as more of a delinquent than a bookworm in fact her mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head a delinquent she sneaked, she slinked away from class. I wouldn't have pegged her as a delinquent, just extremely shy or nervous around people or something. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself, as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts, looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third, if not a half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second, I am shocked and divert my eyes to the book in her hands, before I realise that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself and remember what I walked up to her for. Ooh, another option. Save. Continue. Can I rename these? Let's see. No, they're just playtime. Ah, oh, nuts. So I need to remember that, that was that option, that was that option. Right, I was, um... I was kind of looking up images and stuff like that for the game and I came across some like forum posts and I get the feeling that these options, uh, the result of these options will determine which route you take further on in the game. I believe at one, which this is, um, is the, the 
the part of the game where you decide what route to take for the rest of the game. Um, so... Oh, I don't know which one I should choose, though. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It's... it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay. But I let it slide. So, um, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay or not for me to sit. But finally, she nods just a little. Uh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. Oh, I've never read the book, but I did watch the film based on the book. It was interesting, but I assume the book would be better. So, uh, sorry again for startling you. I'm Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I, I know. We are in the same class. Same class. Sorry, we are in the same, same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it's barely audible even in the still library. Ooh. So I was, I've kind of pegged a right-ish type of voice, maybe? Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Duh! Obviously it was wrong. I mean, everything about her body language says otherwise. Uh, Hanako. I'm... Hanako. I resist the urge to say, that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really, it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll... Just check these books if you don't mind. She nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and introductions of the books I picked up and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander to her direction and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while I realise that she's doing the same and only pretending to immerse in the uh, in Life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all though, it darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gaze is finally when our gaze is finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. Hi. 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 I'm gonna go do something. Without warning, Hanako takes off and runs towards the counter. Her Harry-like takeoff catches me so, so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Lily and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Hey, did you see, uh, uh, notice a girl run past here? Uh, maybe. What did she look like? Long dark hair, kinda shy. She had, well, some scars on her face. You wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and I tried to talk to her, but I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Yuko, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Sh sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Mm. What's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right, I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? What did you do? Nothing, I was just looking for some books and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. She can be very jumpy, I think. And she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit... strange? Says the man who is attending a hospital school. I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound at all that convincing. 
Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems or else they wouldn't be here. But how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the living room? Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no, it sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us have anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers in their desks really like doing that. Did you have find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this library should be closing, but I have to do it. I hope that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh yeah, I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from beside the bean bags where Hanako and I were sitting and return to the counter. Wow, you read a lot, don't you? I surprise myself with that too, honestly, at least when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time earlier this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books with one arm, I trawl my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. How is it? Oh, it's this dude. I turn around to see who's talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. Our main man, Kenji! It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before yesterday. I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I tried to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Prove that we've met before. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. How do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met and you're telling the truth and I just can't remember it, or you are a spy. He pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to speak into my room, although it's hard to believe you can see anything through those thick glasses. Hey man, don't take mick out of people with thick glasses, right? His mood sw swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger at my face damningly. Unlike you? Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Lies. If you think you can pass this Sal because I'm legally blind, you're sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, this resemblance is real. Real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulder and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Ugh. <sighs> Stay there. Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, lest he assault me physically. Though I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh, you try to say this boy is weak? Oh wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again for good measure, I step backwards just in case. What's up, man? You don't look too good. I think something wrong? I don't know. Just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things actually, even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. We live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. See? This is how it is, this world. There is no justice, you see? Even when I lose, I win because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He 
dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? Uh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face. Oh, what the fuck is that, man? Disappointed? What type of fucking thing is that? Oh. I guess I could go either way. Oh, I wonder, I wonder. Another save point, just in case. Continue. Right. I think she was cute. Well, I mean, she wasn't actually... Well, she was more kind of quiet, timid, and scared than cute. But I'm going to be nice, because she probably is cute when we get to know her. So, yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. A strangely disproportionate amount. It's almost like... This is a game. A Adam game? I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. I tried to warn you, man, but you didn't listen. I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed that the number of girls in the school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 64. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that is a full 20%. One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no! What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. No, I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that this school is a battleground. The site of a feminist infiltration. Oh my god. What is this guy? What the fuck? This disparity is the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they've come. In case this cold war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. Not, it's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the build-up of a military has always been the clear sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning, as expected of. Woman. Soon the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They'll string you along and then kill you. Just as they killed me, you'll end up just like me. Okay. Oh, hell no. Can't stop myself from plotting it out. <laughs> hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. The best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop it, stop. I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow? It's cool, I have some graphs and stuff in my room. Puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay, graphs are still cool though, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Yeah, you were definitely mega wrong there, man. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in, this, in an insane world. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That is my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? There can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate that whole last part. And that part is kind of important. It can only be one, like in that foreign movie where there could only be one. And in the end, there was only one dude left, because that was the point. I've never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. 
Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds tangled as. Quick, finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracies and denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me out on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it like a ghost. Wait, maybe he is a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. And I think at this point, I'm going to stop it there. It's been about an hour. Uh, this has been interesting so far. We've been introduced to some more girls and I've already forgotten their names. Oh God, so there was, uh, yeah, I can't remember. The librarian, the girl with the blonde hair, who's quite tall, and uh, the long black haired girl, who's quite quiet and timid and shy and probably not a uh, thingy against talking to people. So we've got, we've been introduced to more waifus uh, for this game, each with their own kind of issue that they either deal with, have adapted to, or haven't in the case of the long haired girl with the kind of scars on her face. Um, So yeah, don't know if there's anyone else. I think there are maybe a couple other characters not really looked into it too much, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to definitely save it there. And um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, so if you're still watching, still listening, uh, well, still watching the video, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all you guys, all you two people or whoever that watch. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like. If you didn't, dislike. I appreciate any comments and um, yeah, I mean, check out my other videos, but uh, that's me for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.